Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm here at one of my favorite parking lot locations because guess what? We have that compact car from this iconic Japanese brand. This is it. This is a 2022 Nissan Sentra. Our particular one is the SR trim. But before we get into our four-door pearlescent white with the blacked out wheels, let's talk about what's going on here. The Sentra. That has been the go-to for people who want that compact car size from Nissan. Now, guess what? There's a lot of different choices in this segment. Everything from the Honda Civic to the Hyundai Elantra, the Kia Forte, even the Subaru Impreza. Now, one of the main vehicles, the Toyota Corolla, has been a home run success for that brand since the 1970s when it first appeared here on our shores. But going up against the competition, there's been changes over the years. Obviously, a lot of people have put their money and their focus into buying a SUV of some size. But Nissan, like the other brands I mentioned, are sticking to the sedan. Changes happened a few years ago with a total redesign, and they continue to kind of tweak the platform while other brands have made total revisions and redesigns. But I really want to put it up against the main player, that Toyota Corolla, and see which one has the better features, the better fuel economy, and of course, that exterior style. So let's go ahead, let's dive into our two-tone Nissan Sentra SR and see, is this the Japanese sedan you should be buying over the Toyota Corolla? Let's find out. Right off the bat, that pearlescent white pops nicely in the floor, Florida sun, lots of metallic flake to it, and with the two-tone, it really works well with the blacked out roof and everything else being white. Now, at the front of the business, like I said, you go back to 2019, there was a redesign on the Sentra platform, really brought it up to the same level as the Ultima and the Maxima when it came to the style. A lot of people called this the baby Maxima. Not me, but a lot of other people. LED headlights are on this SR trim, LED turn singles, and LED daytime running lamps. I do like the angular shape and the way everything is blacked out on the interior. And I think if I'm looking at the Toyota Corolla, I actually like the style of this headlight design a little bit more. Working your way down, no fake vents, nothing like that. Just a little bit of gloss black trim, which works well with our two-tone scheme. And we have LED fog lamps located down below. You'll notice how they take that front fascia and extend it down to really help with that aerodynamic efficiency. And then as we come across the front of the SR trim, you'll notice the V-Motion grill. That's part of their styling philosophy. Just like Kia has the Tiger Nose grill, Nissan has the V-Motion grill. So you have that nice shape. I like the way they went with a little bit darker chrome, which is kind of nice. Instead of that bling blinging shiny chrome finish, you got the Nissan badge. We do have a forward-facing camera tucked all the way up there. It's almost like you can't even see it. I wish they would have put the new Nissan badge on it. I, I know they're waiting for the redesign, which there will be a redesign of the Sentra eventually coming, but it would have been nice to have the new badge across all the different models. Some flat black in the center, fully functional. I like the way they painted the bottom lip area here, that pearlescent white, to kind of just give it a nice cohesive look. And there's just a splattering of gloss black on both sides to make it kind of blend nicely with the headlight design. Now, if you're looking at an aerodynamic standpoint, this is definitely sleeker than a Toyota Corolla. But getting up onto that low slung hood, you have the rises from the V, go right into the hood, and then they evaporate. Just like water on a hot desert day. Coming around the bend for 2022, they do have a midnight package, that midnight edition, which comes with the blacked out accents. This one is not a midnight edition, but it does have the Midnight Edition wheels. This is an option, just like the two-tone paint scheme is an option. So we have these gloss black wheels, simple in design, but I like the simplicity in it. It really is working well. That's an 18 inch wheel, and you're looking at 215 on the width, and you have a lower 45 series sidewall, fully ventilated rotors. And remember, on this particular generation of the Sentra, they reworked the whole rack and pinion to give you better steering effort. Nice smooth finish all the way around, nothing stuck on. You'll notice how the body line for the fender picks up here and then it just flows right into the door panel. 
We are going to get gloss black on the mirror caps along with our blacked out roof. We have 360 degree camera, just a little bit of shiny chrome on the bottom portion. You do have a standard size sunroof and a small shark fin antenna. On the Sentra, I really dig how they take that side sill extension. And also this body line shows motion really well, even though the car is not moving. But of course, it's front wheel drive, just like the Toyota Corolla. And then working towards the rear, as you swing it around, I really am digging how we have this trunk lid spoiler. Extends nicely off the back. You can see our rear tail lights, how they worked everything. And then coming across the center section, look at how they notch the actual trunk lid spoiler around the Nissan badge. There's your SR trim. And going all the way down to the ground level, I do have to zonk this. Just like on the Corolla, they put this fake vent. Why did they do this? Just paint it. Paint it white, paint it gray, paint it something other than this vent thing. So I am going to zonk that, but I do like the way they did the lower bumper area. And you also have a single slash cut oval tip exhaust with a stainless steel tip on it to give it that little extra something, something, just like on the Toyota Corolla. But why don't we pop the hood and see what's powering our Nissan Sentra. All right, guys, you do have the hood open. You do get a prop rod just like on the Corolla, so that's even Stevens. No cuts, no butts, no coconuts, but definitely we don't have coconuts under the hood. We have two liter inline four power. So just like the Corolla, we have a two liter naturally aspirated inline four, no engine cover. So if you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, What's up with all the wires and the tubes and the hoses? That's how a modern engine looks like today in all vehicles without the plastic cover over it. But what are really the numbers when we're talking about this engine? You're looking at a two liter inline four, 149 horsepower, 146 pound feet of torque. It is made it to what Nissan calls an Xtronic CVT. Now remember, the Corolla also comes with a CVT as well. Zero to 60, I hope you're not in a rush to get anywhere around nine seconds. So this isn't some high performance. When you hear SR, it's not like a V-spec or something like that. This isn't some high performance turbocharged setup. Naturally aspirated, the car weighs 3,122 pounds. MPGs is where you're gonna come out the real winner. 28 in the city, 37 on the highway. And like I was saying, you know, comparing this to the Corolla, you're gonna have a very, very similar engine setup obviously depending on what trim you go with the corolla you will have a little bit more horsepower 169 horsepower depending on the trim but why don't we go ahead let's get to the interior and see how the sentra stacks up against the mighty toyota corolla all right guys we're inside this nissan sentra sr with some nice extra options on it i know you're saying to yourself well joe i'm shopping for a compact sedan i don't know what to do help me help me please how much is this one? Well, I don't know if I could help you, but I definitely could tell you how much this is. This particular one with the wheels, with the two-tone style and everything else, you're looking at an MSRP of around $27,000. Not too shabby, but let's see what you get for the money to those door panels. I do like the clean style. It's been around, like I said, for a few years now, but it's soft touch up top. You have the orange contrast stitching, and that doesn't matter which color you go with, you get the orange. I wish that would be maybe an option or something they would change depending on exterior color. No gloss black around the switch gear, but they do give you some faux carbon fiber, which seems out of place, but the good news is you won't get fingerprints all of it. We do have a Bose optional sound system in here, and the door pocket's going to be on the tighter side, so maybe two of those weird dried egg rolls that you get from 7-Eleven and a bottle of iced tea to wash it down. Obviously sweet tea. Going from the door panel to the dash, same story. They raised the bar on the materials. You do have the orange stitching. Not so bad, I guess, but it would have been nice to maybe have some white contrast stitching in here. Let me know how you feel about the stitching, but when you come to the center stack, what are you getting? You're getting eight inches of audio and visual pleasure. That's gonna be that touchscreen system, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and you can see how nice it is to go through the features. And if you don't like the way it's set up, this is what's really cool. Let me show you. Go into settings. You go into customize home menu. Now you could actually drag in the widgets for the different things. So watch this. I say I want to 
put my Sirius XM like right here. So I'm going to click on audio and I'm going to drag. Boom. Now, when I go back, check it out. Here it is. Boom. That's what I just did. Look at that. I did it. And then if you want to go back in, you can come back here. You go into customize home menu. Then you're going to take this and you're going to drag it right into the trash can. Take out the papers and the trash. Yes. Now watch this. You ready? We're going to go back. It's gone because I threw it out. That's the nice way to make this really set up the way you want it. Look at that. You don't want you don't know how to tell time? Just put on a digital clock, just like that. Put it in the reverse. Mm, could be better on the resolution, but you do have trajectory. And we have 360, including remember that forward-facing camera, which is something you don't find very often on a compact car. There it is. Look at that with the trajectory. I could drive right into the woods. Like say if Bigfoot came out, I could just run him right over and then bring his dead body to uh to a museum or something for, for the proof so that I could get all the credit. Now you do have that very Mercedes-Benz-esque uh, AC vent system with the three triple play set up here. This is a triple play, they call that. You do have dual climate, nice rotary knobs, heated seats, and heated steering wheel. And then down below, you're gonna have a nice area for, as you can see, up to four Twinkies. I wouldn't put any more than four because then you're gonna block off the USB-C the USB-A, the aux jack, and the 12 volt. But it is nice to have those snacks ready. Soft touch material on the sides. This is gonna control that X-Tronic CVT transmission. This button right here is sport mode. You hit that, that'll put you in a sport. I do like the way they took the orange stitching everywhere throughout the vehicle. And there's your start stop button. I'll move this out of the way so you can see the start stop button. Nice little silver trim there. Put it back in the park. We do have a little bit more of that carbon fiber setup going on here, but like I said, look, no fingerprints. Two cup holders, still running the same key fob that Noah had on his arc all the way back when, but you know what? It works, and you got remote start, plus it's in the shape of a boat, so that kind of makes sense that they haven't changed it, but nice and light. Soft touch material on the armrest, more of the orange stitching. Open it up. Whoa! Snack jackpot look at what we could fit in here family size uh bag of twizzlers two boxes of twinkies let me see if i can get this all back in here thank god close that up and then the seats developed by nasa for the astronauts zero gravity nice orange stitching a little bit of material in here now on this trim this is manual adjustment for the passenger i get electric adjustment because i am the main astronaut i am like the captain of the space shuttle. That's me, because that's why I have electric assist. And you do have that standard size sunroof, which is a nice little extra touch. But why don't you come over here? You see this? I got a flat bottom steering wheel that I want to introduce you to coming over to the Nissan Sentra side. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel of this Sentra. How do I know I'm in a Sentra? You do get these optional sill plates with the Sentra name to remind you what car you bought. Plus, you can't see it now, but there's actually ambient lighting underneath the vehicle when you lock and unlock the doors at night give you that nice bright led white glow to allow you access to welcome you behind the wheel there's our seat controls like i was telling you eight way positionable with the lower lumbar i'm six feet tall and the wonderful thing is plenty of room in here so even with the sunroof plenty of room steering wheel i didn't lie you have a flat bottom steering wheel that did continue the orange stitching all the way around, which is nice. Flat black on the buttons. It is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. No paddles to shift through any simulated gears. And then the dash is very clear, concise, and straightforward. So you're going to have that large digital display in the center, which you have a cornucopia, a plethora of information, including all of that safety technology in this vehicle, like driver assistance, for example. There you can see lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, emergency brake assist, speed line limit sign, parking aids, rear cross traffic alert. It goes on and on. Driver attention alert, timer alert, low temperature alert. So you're going to be alerted whether you like it or not, but you can't turn those things off if you don't want to be alerted. Analog tech, analog speedometer, fuel gauge, and coolant gauge. 
nicely displayed. I don't need a full digital display. I like some old school tech in there. But why don't you go ahead, or why don't we go ahead, because you can't go without me. Let's go ahead, get into the back seat, and see how much room is in this smaller size Sentra. All right, guys, back seat time in this 2022 Sentra. And here's really where the proof is in the eating of the pudding or in the sitting of the back seat. Six feet tall still, and I still got headroom in here, plenty to spare. The bad news is you don't have a pocket behind the driver's side when you're sitting in the back, but you do have at least one USB. They give us a USB-A you can share with your friends, just like Barney said, sharing is caring and all that other mumbo jumbo. I do like the nice large pocket. I could probably fit, I would say, a pair of Yeezys in here. Depending on the size, of course, but you could put a pair of Yeezys sitting back there. Very interesting looking shoe. Not really my style, but you could put them back there. Nice soft material. Flip that thing down. Ooh, look at that. That's the noise that it makes with all the springs in there, but you got two cup holders. Flip it back, but why don't we go ahead, let's get into the trunk because I wanna take this Sentra for a spin. All right guys, time to get in the trunk, real simple. Underneath the Nissan badge is a button. Click it, lift it up, and you're gonna be greeted to a nice wide opening, deep cargo floor. That's 14 cubic feet of space. There was once upon a time on a compact car, the largest thing you could put was two loaves of bread. Now they allow you that flexibility, the seats do the 60-40 split, and then on top of that, Nissan does give you not only a cargo, uh, floor mat, but also a spare tire easily located underneath just in case. They don't call them on purposes, they call them accidents. So you'll have that uh, safety and that reassure sense that you could pop the spare on there. But you know what? We don't need the spare where we're going. We don't even need roads. Well, yeah, we do actually need roads. We do have some roads. Don't worry. We're not going back to the future. We're going back on throttle in this Nissan Sentra. Let's go do right, it. Guys, we're behind the wheel of the 2022 Nissan Sentra SR. I do have it in sport mode. How do I know? It's got a little S right next to the drive indicator there, but I'm gonna go on throttle. On throttle, here we go. So like I was saying, not the fastest acceleration whatsoever in this class, but with the combination of the Xtronic CVT and the two liter, you're getting some really, really good fuel economy. So that's the upside of things with this Nissan Sentra. Visibility is great and actually rides really smooth, which is nice to see. They did do some work, major work with the chassis, with rigidity, with sound deadening material, getting to the eight inch infotainment system is well within reach. And even though the Corolla has a iPad style screen and this also as well. I do like the way this one is mounted to the dash a lot better than on the Toyota Corolla. But steering wheel has a nice thickness to it with the way that they reworked the rack of pinion. It does increase that feedback as you're driving, which is wonderful. And then the seats, like I said, designed by NASA, those zero gravity seats really allow you to take those longer road trips. And the great news is you're not gonna get out of the Sentra walking like a cowboy or a cowgirl. Now for the room in the backseat for the passengers, I think they're gonna be pleasantly surprised. And uh, unlike some of the other competition in this compact car class, you at least have one USB back there to keep, uh, to keep things flowing and charge for your rear seat passengers. Blind spot monitoring, they actually have the monitors on the interior of the car, which is kind of nice that light up. Uh, a lot easier to see than the stuff that kind of glows on the mirror. And then just really, really smooth going down the road. I, I would like to see a turbocharged version of this car. It would be nice to bring that performance back to the Sentra. I'm sure a lot of people remember like the V-Spec and some of the other examples of Sentras over the years. Uh, would be a real welcome addition, especially with the better look. But uh, going into this left-hand bend, brakes feel good, easy to modulate, that front wheel drive that we have. And then the feedback, like I said, that you're getting to the steering wheel is definitely improved. But here we go, on throttle. 
this is where things get a little a little shaky because trying to merge with traffic makes it difficult with that slower zero to 60 time. So if you're saying to yourself right now, or at least you're saying to me while you're watching the review and you're like, well, Joe, I don't care about zero to 60. It actually helps you be a little bit safer because it allows you to merge a lot easier if you have a vehicle that has a little quicker zero to 60 time than nine seconds. I mean, I could pedal a bike faster zero to 60 than this Sentra, but like I said, at the end of the day, you are getting some pretty good return on your MPGs. Now, if you're wondering, well, Joe, you said that this has a CVT. If it sounds like it's shifting, those are simulated shifts. So to help cut down on that loud RPM drone when you go on throttle with a CVT, the simulated shifts help cut down that drone and help lower the, the revs. So that's why you're seeing the tech moving all over the place is because of those simulated shifts. But hopefully this has been a nice overall feel of what the SR trim of the Sentra brings for 2022, especially when you're comparing it to the Toyota Corolla. But we're gonna get back to where this review all started and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right guys, it's been another Florida sunny fun filled day with this 2022 Nissan Sentra SR trim. Let me know what you think. Did Nissan do enough a few years ago when they redesigned the Sentra to make it a worthy competitor to the mighty Toyota Corolla? Dying to read what you have to say in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. If you wanna help us keep making great content just for you, click the link in the description. Get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Got to give it up to the queen of the camera. She is working it just like the champ that she is. Thank you, Lori, for all that you do. Show her some love in that comment section. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.